Good morning and welcome at our worship service on this Sunday, the 14th of June. I hope that you had a wonderful week and welcome as we join together in the presence of God to be renewed in our faith and also to be renewed in our love for the world, our comfort and our strife for hope. We have one or two intimations that we would like to share with you this morning. One of which is that our Sunday School material is available on the church website to be downloaded and I hope that the children will enjoy the activities. The church office is still open remotely. You are more than welcome to contact Kirsty during office hours. She is available between 9.30 and 12.30 Monday to Fridays on either the mobile number which is available on the church magazine or via the landline and Kirsty will contact you back. Kind reminder also of our weekly moment of prayer across Scotland at 7 o'clock this evening. The nominations of all the churches in Scotland have joined together in this ecumenical time so that we can pray for our country and for the circumstances in our world. So please join us together this evening at 7 o'clock as we pray for our world. There would be also some resources on our Facebook page. Then if there are any assistance needed or if you would like to assist and volunteer with our care group, please contact Ian or Kathleen Thompson or any of the volunteers involved. They are doing a stirring job in supporting many in our community during this time. And if you are in need, do not hesitate to contact them and they will try and assist or put you on the right direction for assistance. You can contact the church office as well uh, or reach us on our church email elgansongiles at gmail.com. This is the intimations for this Sunday. Today is the first Sunday of Kingdom Time, a time when we reflect on Jesus and what he brought to the kingdom and also how we are trained to be his disciples, his children in this world. So as we gather this morning from our scattered lives into the presence of God, we seek the unity of the Spirit. We seek the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ to seek the peace of God the Father. God's people have now gathered around, even though we are in our own homes, but we are gathered before God. Therefore, let us worship him together as we sing our first praise hymn this morning, hymn 547, hymn 547, What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
to all our children this morning. I hope that you had a wonderful week and we'll be able to take some time off this weekend to enjoy some of hopefully better weather than we had during the past week. If you were doing home schooling, I hope that that went well too and that you are perhaps looking forward to the summer holidays which might be just around the corner in a few weeks from now. There was a game that we used to play when we were younger. It was called Spot the Difference and I want to quickly have a little game of you uh, this morning. In my hand I have three kinds of food. Lovely summer food. Uh, it's a hamburger, a hot dog and an ice cream. But what's the difference uh, in this line of pictures? Because both the hamburger and the hot dog and the cone I think are made of grain and, uh, and are starchy. Mm. So that can't be it. But perhaps it's because the hot dog, the hot dog and the hamburger are hot foods and the ice cream is a yummy, ice cold delight that we eat as a dessert. Mm. So I would say, what do you think? The ice cream? The ice cream should be out. I'm going to show you quickly another picture. And I have to be very tactful and discreet because there's three ladies on this picture with babies. The one is very young and we have another young mom with a baby but what do we have here is that a mom with a baby or is that a grandmother with a baby what do you think a mom or a grandmother if i had to choose i would say that perhaps this is a grandmother with a baby or is it let's find out from genesis 18 because there we read that Abram and Sarah did not have any children. And then three visitors came to them and they promised Abram and Sarah that one day they will have a child. There was only one problem. If I recall correctly, I think Sarah might have been in her 80s or 90s. The Bible tells us in Genesis 18 verse 11, Abram and Sarah were already very old and Sarah was past the age of childbearing. So Sarah laughed to herself as she thought, after I am worn out and my Lord is old, will I now have this pleasure of having a child? And then we read in Genesis 21 verse 1 that the following happened. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, and as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age, at the very time God had promised, and Abraham gave the name Isaac. Yes, so it seems that even the impossible thing that for most of us we think mm, that can't happen, God made it possible. When God makes a promise to us, he will always keep it. Because God is on our side. He promised to love us and to comfort us and also to keep us safe. We must always remember that even when times are tough and when we don't understand everything and perhaps we are a bit like Sarah and think, mm, can't happen anymore. It's, I'm just too old. Or oh, I am just too young. Or oh, perhaps I can't speak so well. Or oh, perhaps um, I'm afraid of people and therefore I don't want to tell them anything. The wonderful thing is, God used Moses, who said, well, I'm stuttering. Gideon, who was shy, was used by God. And each time when God was dealing with either Sarah or Gideon or with Moses, he made a promise. He made a promise that he will be with them and that he will care and love them each and every day. Now, we have an opportunity to shine for Jesus each and every day because Jesus made a promise that he had sent his comforter, the Holy Spirit, to us. So, just as Sarah learned in the Old Testament that God keeps his promises, so we learn from Jesus that through the Holy Spirit, that same promises are still being kept by God. Therefore, let us sing together this morning, Lord, the light of your light is shining. That wonderful hymn, hymn 448, Lord, the light of your light is shining. And I hope that your light will shine and I hope that you will have a wonderful week ahead.
come together before the presence of God to pray. To pray to be renewed through the Spirit in our faith, but also in our commitment to service. So let us come together before God and let us pray. God our Father, your love is at work in all that you have made. Son of God, in your likeness we are made new. Holy Spirit, you touch our lives of hope, receive our worship, claim us for your service, and set us free to honour you today. Holy God, giver of light and grace, there were moments in the week past that we did not follow your way, that we did not love or show compassion to those around us, our neighbours. It might have been through our ignorance, it might have been through our weakness, it might have been through our own deliberate fault. We have belittled your love and betrayed your trust. We are ashamed, we are sorry, and we want to once again commit ourselves to follow you. But you always come and seek us and take our hand so that we can journey with you. You do this through the life and through the work of your Son Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgave us all that is past, and is continuing to lead us into your light. Jesus died and rose again for us in humble penitence, accept his love, accept his freedom, and receive his peace. God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from you alone come everlasting joy and peace. Fill us with joy in your promises, and send us out to be bearers of your peace. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, who taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory for ever. Amen. Our reading this morning comes from Paul's letter to the congregation in Rome. And we read from Romans 5, from verse 1 to 8. Peace and hope. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the glory of God. Not only so, but we also glory in our sufferings, because we know that suffering produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope, and hope does not put us to shame, because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit, who has been given to us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Praise be to God for his holy word. When we read Romans 5, 
We are confronted in verse 7 with this very familiar English phrase, to die for. In the context that we normally use the phrase, it is sometimes used to describe something that we either have ate or uh, something that we wear or a comment that we make uh, about somebody else's uh, clothes or about their food. Oh, this lamb is to die for, or this dress, or this jacket, or the shoes are to die for. Hmm. Well, perhaps none of us are really willing to give up our lives for a jacket or for a piece of food. However, we use this phrase very often. But when Paul uses the phrase, he uses it in the context of the sacrifice that Jesus had made on the cross. A sacrifice that he made on our behalf. And that through the sacrifice we have a sense of hope and a sense of glory. Because we are part of the promise that God has made to each one of us. I am kindly reminded of a story that I once heard about hope. And how hope can sometimes be portrayed as false. In a field hospital during the Second World War, there were eight men in a ward, all injured on the front. One of them had a bed next to a window. And from this window, he could look out. And every day, he would describe to his fellow comrades in the ward what he seen. He would tell them about the flowers, he would tell them about the birds, he would tell them about the trees. But unfortunately, his condition got worse and worse. One of his fellow mates in the ward decided that it would be more kinder to put him out of life, so that he could get the bed with the window. His hope was that by just releasing this man from his pain, he could get the window and have the opportunity to look at the outside world. And so, one evening, he snuck up to the bed, put a pillow over the soldier's face, and he sadly just slipped away. The next morning, he asked the nurse if he could have the bed. As he was lying, getting comfortable, he drew back the curtains, and what he saw amazed him, puzzled him, and confronted him. It was a brick wall. Their friend was standing them and was giving them hope during this time of desperation. So much so that he got jealous of this hope. It consumed him. And eventually, when he opened the window, it was a brick wall. Perhaps this is also true of what we read in Genesis uh, 18, and in 22, chapter 22, this morning in the children's address, when the three visitors visit Abraham and Sarah and promise them the hope that she will have a child, she laughed. She opened up the curtain window, looked at her age, realized that there was absolutely no way that she could even think of having a child. And yet, at the promised time, we read in chapter 22 of Genesis, in verse 1, that a child was born, and Abraham and Sarah named him Isaac. From this example in the Old Testament, we come back to our reading in Romans 5. And we come to realize that what Paul was talking about here was not a fake hope. It was a real hope. A hope that was enthralled and inscribed and promised by Jesus himself. Jesus did not provide some false hope. He wasn't looking uh, at a brick wall. He was looking at God's new kingdom. He was looking through an earthly window and helping us to look through this window so that we can see the hope and the glory that there is in God. And through this, Paul also reminded us that this glory and this hope is sometimes settled in our suffering because Paul writes suffering produces perseverance perseverance character and character hope and hope never puts us to shame 
because God's love, Paul writes, has poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. I've once heard the story of a very young minister, age 31, who had the devastating news that he was terminally ill with cancer and that he had only a few months left. The problem was that he was convinced that over the 30 years of his life, he was only 31 when he was diagnosed, that through this 30 years he raked up a lot of sin. We've all been to uni, we all know what happens there. So he thought to himself, but I would never be able to get this all right. I would never be able to come before God and to make penance for my sins. Perhaps if I had 40 years, perhaps if I had 30 years, perhaps if I only had a year, I could change my life and show God that I could make up for the things that I've done wrong. The thing is, is that what he missed was that God already died for our sins. And through the, convince, the convincing um, whispering and pouring out of the Holy Spirit in his heart, he then wrote a powerful sermon and said, what I never realized that in Romans 5, when we read verse 8, while we are still sinners, the original Greek actually says, while still we were still sinners. There's two stills in the original Greek. We can't translate it in English, obviously. But while we are sometimes still trapped in our suffering, God has already said, Christ has died for us. We are already in this new world, in this new order, where, where God has said that we belong to him. That no matter what had happened in our past, how devastating that might have been, how many sins I might have raked up over the last 43 years, or 53 years, or even more, that I don't need to work it off. I don't need to do something in return for what I've done wrong because it has already been done. God has already given his son. God has already provided the sacrifice. God has already given us new hope. Yes, if we continue with Isaac's story, we see how Abraham was challenged to sacrifice Isaac, which is a horrible story in the Old Testament, if you have children. But then we also read how God provided the sacrifice. And that God already gave everything that Abraham needed to know that his son will be part of the wonderful journey of God with us as humans. God gave his son for the ungodly. Paul writes in verse 6, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might be prepared to die. But will we? But Jesus did. God provided the sacrifice. He provided himself through Jesus so that we may know that we are still still being saved. That's perhaps a bit of an analogy on what Paul writes. While still we were still sinners, although we are still who we are, God has already provided the sacrifice. It's already there. We can claim it. Christ has died for us. But if a grim uh, start to kingdom a time in the church uh, through this epistle, but this, this epistle is not focusing on the sacrifice alone. It's also focusing our mind on the hope, on the hope that is for us, that there are always hope for us in Christ, that nothing, no suffering, no issue, no problem can overwhelm us, can overwhelm us to be part of the wonderful hope that we have in Christ Jesus our Lord. He who came to give us hope, he who poured his spirit in our hearts so that we may love, he who came 
to give us this wonderful opportunity to serve him in his kingdom and to know that in everything that we do he will always be guiding us guarding us loving us and being there for us so that we can know that although life might sometimes seem powerless that we still have God on our side. I'm looking again at verse 5 of Romans 5 and hope does not put us to shame because God's love had been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. May this be a verse of hope for the week that lies ahead. Praise be to God as we once again hear his word in our own lives. Amen. Once again, we are joined by prayer. As we pray together this morning and intercedes for our world, may God give us a new opportunity to serve those around us, but that our prayer will also lead into action, our action in giving love and comfort and hope to those around us. Therefore, let us pray together this morning. Gracious God, rejoicing in your blessings and your hope, trusting in your loving care for all, we bring to you our prayers. We pray for the created world, for those who rebuild where things have been destroyed, for those who fight hunger, poverty and disease, for those who have power to bring change for the better and to renew our hope as we find a place that people are safe and that all people may be safe. We pray for our own country, for our Queen and her ministers, those who shape and frame our laws in Westminster, Holyrood and Murray Council, that they will keep the peace, administer justice for those who teach those who heal, all who serve the community. We pray, Lord, for people in need, those for whom life is a bitter struggle, those whose lives are clouded by death or loss, by pain or disability, by discouragement or fear, by shame or rejection. May we, Lord, provide for them a safe haven so that they may know your kingdom is here, O Lord, your will be done. We pray for those in the circle of friendship and love around us, children and parents, sisters and brothers, friends and neighbours, and for those especially in our thoughts today. Lord, we pray for the church, in its standing with the poor, in its love for the outcast and the ashamed, in its service to the sick and the neglected, in its pro proclamation of your gospel of hope and peace and love in this land, in this place, and at this time. In the life of your church, your kingdom come, O Lord, your will be done. And Lord, now we pray that you will guide us and be with us during this week. May you be our light in darkness, our hope in anxiety, and our love when we have to give love to those around us. We pray this all in the name of your Son and our friend, Jesus Christ. Amen. We close our service by singing this wonderful hymn um, that helps us also to reflect on, on looking forward in faith, looking forward in the hope that God has given us and looking forward to a life 
where we can serve one another in the way that Jesus showed us servitude through his life and through his resurrection. Let us sing him 237, him 237, look forward in faith. To you all, thank you for joining us again this week for our service. And I hope to see you once again next week, same time, same place. To join us also with uh, Reverend Sonia for the midweek service on a Thursday. And um, follow us on Facebook for some more information. May you have a blessed week and go in the peace of God. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us to give us hope and perseverance, to give us love where we need to share it, but to give us peace in the times when we need it most. May the blessing of God go before us as we enter the new week in his name. Amen. We close our service of our retiring hymn, May the God of Peace Go With Us, hymn 786, and do have a very blessed week. Good day.